we didn't understand, even though we hadn't missed a payment, mm. that the margin loan could be called in at the drop of a hat. Mm. And, uh, and we didn't even know at that time, we were so naive, we didn't even know at that time um, that it was pulled against the house because we always said that was our number one, that we didn't want to touch our house because we were quite conservative. Um, it didn't end up in that way. You're listening to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. Here's your host, Tabitha Bright. Hello and welcome to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard where I get to speak to property investors from around Australia about their investing journey. My name's Tabitha Bright and I'm the head of coaching here at Positive Real Estate where we help people build wealth through property. With over 8,000 clients across Australia and New Zealand, there are some incredible stories to tell which hopefully make your investing journey that little bit easier and will inspire you along the way. So my guests today are Helen and Ian Morse. They're going to talk us through some of the hard lessons of not understanding your risk fully, overcoming the fear of loss to move forward and successfully invest, and how they took off over 12 months out of their day jobs to travel, um, which was a massive goal and dream of theirs, and they got to tick that off. So enjoy this conversation with Helen and Ian. Helen and Ian, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Tab. Thanks Hi, for having Tab. us. Thanks. It's lovely to see you. Thanks for having us. Oh, lovely to see you too. Um, so today we've got quite a story. Um, it's, a story. <laughs> <laughs> it's a story uh, that I would summarise as the key topic being courage and bravery. Uh, and so I really, I guess I wanted to start from the place that when I first met you guys, um, you'd had a bit of a ride. So I met you in 2010 and 2008, December, you guys had pretty much lost a, a pretty sizable chunk of money. You'd, um, you'd been working with a uh, financial planner yeah. and well, you'd... <laughs> understood <laughs> and the financial planner had put you into a commercial property managed fund that was far riskier than you guys realized is that right yeah. oh yeah much so much so our fault probably we hadn't done our due diligence i guess yeah we yeah trusted. yeah we trusted him yeah okay and um and from there, you had a margin loan. So what that meant was that you'd invested a certain portion of money and then you'd borrowed, again, double that investment yeah. against your home that you'd paid off. Yeah, but we didn't realise that at the time. Yeah. It wasn't explained to us that that had even happened. Right, okay. And so, and then... I guess when the GFC hit, uh, the managed funds were decimated and your loan was called in and you suddenly, and within a very short time, which is common with margin loans, you found that you had to pay back um, a substantial loan in a very short period of time and that meant yeah. mortgaging your home. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it was a full amount. We didn't understand, even though we hadn't missed a payment, mm. that the margin loan could be called in at the drop of a hat. Mm. And, yeah. uh, and we didn't even know at that time we were so naive we didn't even know at that time um that it was pulled against the house because we always said that was our number one that we didn't want to touch our house because we were quite conservative um it didn't end up in that way Right. You did recover some funds because you went via the ombudsman and it was a long process, wasn't it? Um, and yeah, I mean, that was, that was probably a couple of years and a lot of headaches. <laughs> Headache, tears, <laughs> frustration. Um, bottles of wine. Bottles of wine. <laughs> we, were, we were lucky in one respect that um, with Ian and I, um, it was like a roller coaster ride. And when he was up, I was down. Mm. When I was 
up, he was down and we got through it yeah. just by, you know, supporting each other. And, and a lot of help from a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. A lot, lot of friends. A <laughs> yeah. lot, yeah. lot of tears over, over spilt milk, I guess. But, um, yeah, yeah. We, we got there in the yes. end, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. We learned a lot. We learned a lot. Yeah, yeah and, and I think one of the themes that comes, well, there's two themes that I see because I've worked with you guys um, uh, from 2010, although there was a bit of a gap which we'll talk about, um, from 2010. And um, so we've got to know each other very well over the, over the years and I like to think have built a, a good solid relationship and we can have frank conversations which... You know, it's rare in your life to have people that you could have those frank conversations with. Um, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, you're amazing. No, no, you... <laughs> oh, <laughs> <that> was... <laughs> Thank yeah. you. But it was actually meant to say that you're amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and you've been an absolute pleasure to coach over this time. Um, and you've been a pleasure to coach because you are able to self-analyze and you are able to take the coaching, um, which is really valuable. But taking a step back, the two things that have come through from me coaching you, what I've noticed is um, A, how you work together as a couple and how you do support each other, even though, like we were chatting today, Helen, you and Ian are, are very different personalities. <laughs> Absolutely different. <laughs> Do you want to give us a quick snapshot on what that looks like? Oh, okay. <laughs> so people understand. People that don't know you, yes. Okay, so Ian is the, the grounded, um, probably sensible, sensible. one. <laughs> um, I'm the... I'm the big picture person, um, the one that likes to think that I can see, you know, yeah. the big, the overall picture and then Ian's the more attention to detail. So really, although we're really different, I guess we make a good team in that respect that um, I, he, he, he does get frustrated because as soon as he starts talking money, bank accounts, bills are <laughs> paying, I'm like, um, <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> Also, Ian, so, yeah, but that's that's just in my nature, and that's yeah. just who I am. And I used to make excuses for it. However, I'm not making excuses anymore because I guess we're both good at different things. Yeah, and, and but yeah. you still have to show an interest in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Details. That, yeah, I really like that. that. You're not overly interested in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's important when you're building a portfolio, right, that you have both of these skills in your skill set. And for couples, it's often really valuable, right, because you do have get to have that mix of yin and yang. You have the, the big picture optimist and you have the grounded detail person. And um, for those of you that are single <laughs> and you may not have the benefit of that, that are watching the podcast, you know, don't despair. That's what a coach is for if you to fill in some of the gaps for you if you don't have that. But if you do as a couple have that, you know, it really is an extra bonus. And I see where couples can get that to work and communicate really effectively. Um, it is a massive strength when you're building a portfolio because it's never straightforward, is it, guys? No, it's oh, no, never no, straightforward. No, no. But it's also <laughs> good to have a third party like yourself. Yeah, yeah. Because when um, we can't nut it out between the two of us, it's good to have an impartial yeah. third party to, to, yeah. to, to speak. To, to agree or disagree well, with, not, with not, either of us. Not even or necessarily or agree or disagree, but give us a different <laughs> insight. Options, insight. Take options. sides. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's an insight, um, yeah, and options and and someone with your skills um, that I think you show is that you, we, we always have a laugh at the end of the day and, and we yeah. trust you and we just, that value is really beneficial yeah. for us. To Sometimes know that makes we can the water a lot clearer, clearer. than what yeah. We, yeah. we can see yeah. at the time. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, well, I'm glad I'm adding some value in there. It's, um, you know, I've had coaches for most of my professional life and 
I've always found sometimes they don't always tell you what you want to hear, um, but um, they certainly um, provide some thinking fodder um, at the very least. So fodder hopefully, and feedback and um, direction. Yeah. Um, yeah, even if it's direction, maybe that I guess you have to go away and think about, and which we yeah. do. Yeah. Um, Do a bit more soul searching. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. And so um, this brings me to the second thing that I've really noticed with you guys, and that is your um, your innate courage, your bravery, because you came along to one of our information nights and you sat down with me and we had a good chat about your circumstances and you did share in that meeting that you'd had this challenge um, where you'd lost this sum of money that was really important to you. Um, and you were still, I think, in that period of reeling from, from what that meant for you guys because you had your home paid off and you were in a good position and then, then this hit and it changed um, your position almost overnight. And so um, you joined our mentoring program. And then I remember I reached out to you a few times and um, it was like... <laughs> It it had um it went silent. Have I still got you guys there? Oh yep, great. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. The that might be us. You. I don't know. Yeah. You're 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 there. All good. Wonderful. And so, just in case you didn't catch that, um, that after you enrolled in our mentoring program in education and coaching, um, I reached out a couple of times and um and I couldn't reach you. Um, do you want to talk about what happened there? Because um, I always frame courage and bravery um, as something that you have despite the fear. So you can't have courage without fear. And sometimes the fear, when you've had an experience like you guys had, can be, um, you know, pretty substantial. And is that what happened for you guys when you first joined up? Because I didn't speak to you really for about two years. I was double checking the notes in the system. Yeah. yeah. I can only speak from my own point of view that when we signed up, we knew we had to do something. So we signed up. Yeah. But then for me, the thought of investing again, one, I had no confidence really in what we would not as in investing in housing, but what yeah. I was doing. Yeah. I didn't understand. And I was scared of losing what little bit I had left. Mm -hmm. So it took me a little while to get my head around that. Yeah. To be yeah. honest. Yeah. Helen. And with myself, um, very similar, I guess, um, the way because we, we were pretty same in those respects and, it, and it, it's just something that just it just knocks you for six and you yeah it's not it's not just the fact of trusting other people it's it's trusting yourself as well um and you go off and do a lot of soul searching um i guess a little bit of research um you go through stages as well through where you're stages. angry yeah you're angry you're frustrated of course. you're you know, and, and, and life moves on regardless, so you're doing other things as well. Yeah. Maybe we had other things going on at, at the time. I can't, I can't really remember. Yeah, because I remember you reached out to me um, yeah. a little bit later on in the journey and you just said, we're, we've got to do something. We're here. Yeah. We, were, we were caught up and we're going to move forward. We've just drawn a line in the sand now. And and this is where I started to see some of this bravery that I keep referring to because it's been a constant theme because then you went out, and I've made some notes here, um, you went out and you've bought property in New South Wales, WA, two in Queensland, and you've got your property in Victoria as well in Melbourne. So from to come from such a place of fear to then, you know, obviously with some coaching, some guidance, some support, and it hasn't been a smooth journey. It probably hasn't always performed when we've wanted it to. And despite that, um, you know, you've still moved forward and you're in this fantastic position now where your portfolio, you've got exposure to all of the major markets in Australia. And for anyone listening at the moment to understand that you've got property in 
you know, Brisbane, in um, uh, Newcastle, in uh, Perth, um, in Melbourne, to be poised like you are and positioned while the market's about to do what it's about to do now um, is just fantastic. And, you know, I am, I am like, you know, <laughs> everything to the universe. The, we're just now waiting because you're perfectly positioned. We're just now waiting for that market to deliver that capital growth. I don't um, think that we would have, um, I, I don't know what we would have done if we hadn't have met you guys and had that, I don't know if you call it, Bravery, courage, <laughs> bravery. or madness, or, or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> or an extra glass yeah. of wine the night before, yeah. perhaps. I don't know. But um, we don't know really where we would have, oh. where we'd be now if we yeah. hadn't come, come back and yeah. set some goals, set strategies with your help, obviously. Bit the bullet. Um, you know. <laughs> Just moved away from what's gone on in the past to okay yeah. we just gotta do this but it's also the other people that you put us in contact with as well yeah i mean yeah. Peter, peter Gwynn, he, he's fantastic yeah. yeah he sort of reassures you all the way yeah yep. so that's finance yep finance yeah. broker yep yeah. and even the other clients i know you guys have formed oh. relationships with other <laughs> that's the one thing i miss because with, of covid not is not being able to, to go face. down is to catch up, catch with up in the evenings. Yeah. yeah. People that we've, you know, you, you've, there's certain things in common. You've got this main umbrella of, of um, commonality with PRE. Um, but yeah, we have we find that we have a lot more in common with. Yeah, it is, the, and it's interesting to see what people are doing. People are doing, yeah, yeah. And there's people that inspire us that are in PRE oh, shit, as yeah. well. So, um, people that yeah. you want to emulate. Yeah, yeah. Um, not not just the people that we meet up with, the other clients, but it's the other staff as well. And yeah. staff that have been with you and that have moved forward with their um, careers. careers or um, personal life or, or, mm. or whatever, you know. It's, it's, it, it's an inspiring group. Like. Yeah, 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 and it's it's that old adage about the company you keep, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and and you know that, and like I was saying to you, that's the question that I often come up against when I'm about to go and do something. I always say, now what would Helen and Ian do? <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> we chuckle about that one. I've heard that said oh so much lately because we did. Um, it wasn't so much of a blog. We did. Whilst we, I mean, we'll talk about, you know, what we did a little bit later. I think that might be one of the questions. Mm. Um, but we did a daily diary and daily um, photos on Facebook and we had so many followers over that 15 months. Um, and we've met people in, oh, all over the yeah. world on our travels. Yep. And we're still getting messages um, from people in their 20s, people in their 30s, people in their 40s, 50s, 60s. You know, you inspire us to want to do what you've done. In the Let's future. talk about that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> because it, what happened, guys, is these guys came and sat down with me. And sometimes property takes its time to perform. It doesn't always go up the next year after you buy it. And there can be some frustration around what we call the consolidation phase. So you've positioned yourself well, you've bought all your property, and then it's like, now what? <laughs> and these guys had some big goals and we went through their portfolio and we talked through where the different markets were at, what was happening um, and what they needed to do. And for a lot of investors, it really is just about time, time in the market. It's kind of like baking a cake and you can have all the best ingredients and you put them into the bowl and you mix it all up. But unless you give it time in the oven to bake, you don't have the result. And this is where these guys were at. And something that was super important to them was, there, Helen, there was your photography, um, Ian and Helen, I know both wanted to travel and um, we worked out that with their portfolio, because it wasn't going to cost too much to hold, 
Um, we had buffers in place and you guys had the ability to, da -da, I'll let you tell uh, everyone. <laughs> we were able to, um, well, we kept saying we're going to, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Yeah. And so we went to visit Tab one day and <laughs> went to her office and, and I was when are we going to do this? We keep saying we're going to do it. And she said, right, okay, let's set a, let's set a date. And we, and we set it for um, 12 weeks. Yeah. From, yeah. from that meeting, it was over three months. And within that time, we'd, we rented the house out. Um, we'd um, put everything in put storage. All stuff in storage. Worked out a bit of a plan. plan yeah. Quit your jobs. Where we were going to yeah, head. Quit the jobs. Quit the jobs. <laughs> where we where we're going to head. Um, we've got a massive, great big world map in the study. Um, and I mean, we already had kind of uh, places that. Quit. But we didn't know how we were going to plan it as in a circuit. Yeah, as such. yeah, yeah. So we had a lot of planning to do in that time. We had to sort out like things like bills and, and um, oh, what else? Yeah. Make sure it, the it, rentals were looked after. Yeah, it, it was a full on oh. year. Uh, sorry, full on three, three months, 12 yeah. weeks. And and then, yeah, I, I, I still think we'd be going to go if Tab had said, okay, all right, let's yeah. make a date. <laughs> So, so we, we're not going to talk about this again. 28th of <laughs> You come back and you haven't booked us time? Yeah. 28th of you're not July. Going. You're not yeah, going. there was some tough love, yeah? yeah. <laughs> so 28th of July it was, and we did um, four months in Africa. Wow. We did yeah. a month in, oh, in, in Africa it's mostly camping as well. Um, we did a month in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Month uh, in Morocco yes. and about four months in South America, uh, and then into Europe. Into Europe for the grand finale. For the, for the last yeah, nuts. Yeah. How long in total? Fifteen months. Fifteen yeah, we months. For Twelve. We months. did overshoot for twelve months. Before. Yeah, because <laughs> there were some strict parameters, right? Because we had. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Helen's optimism coming into play. Yeah, yeah, that's where my optimism and my airhead comes in. Um, we did outstretch that 12 months, but that we got into the UK at the 12th month mark yeah. and we were in the UK for three months. However, we've still got lots of family and friends in the UK, so we did a lot of catching up. Um, a lot of couch surfing. Oh, yeah. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> we backtracked yeah. it around um, South America. Yeah, and at one stage we hired um, a what's it called? A Ford, Ford Ranger. Ford Ranger with the tent on the camper oh. on the top. Yep. We, uh, we drove ourselves from Cape, Cape Town, Town through Namibia, Botswana, Anna. into Zimbabwe. Yeah, for a month we did that. Oh, and that was the best. It was. We weren't initially going to do that. We were going to go fly. Once we got down to Cape Town. Oh, this is something else that we've got to talk about, Tab. This is my uh, <laughs> challenge, the bit I missed out on. Uh -huh. we, What's didn't, that? we didn't go to Nepal. We didn't get there. So, oh, so is that the next thing that we're putting we're on the list? Yeah, we've yeah. got to organise that. Um, yeah, we've got to, we've got to organise. The, the problem being that everywhere we went in the world, we came across people that said, you can't miss out on here, you can't miss out on there. <laughs> So we came back with a bigger uh, list than what we went right. with, <laughs> which is, um, oh, it's great in a way. Um, and and oh, look, we did, we're so, so grateful lucky. and so, so lucky to have done what we've done and, and got a lot of gratitude for yeah. the people that we met along the way, um, the experiences we had in every yeah. place. And we don't really have a favourite, do we? Because no, there there's so good. many favourites. They're all good for different reasons. Different reasons. Yeah. And, and so from a coaching's perspective, you guys have ticked off some of your bucket list stuff, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and 
Yeah, but it's taken, and I come back to this courage and bravery thing, it's taken that courage and bravery because to pack your life up in literally 12 weeks, and I mean, I, I remember, I hope you don't mind me mentioning it, your beloved dog passed away. Yeah. You had everything just happened in that in that one short period of time. And we'd talked about what you'd wanted to do for a couple of years, and then we worked out that day when you came to see me and you said, this is the portfolio. It, it, needs to do something before we can do something. And I said, not true. You can do something now. Yeah. <laughs> and we worked out that you actually could. And that was a massive step to take. Well, to recognise that fact was mm. bloody awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're starting to have these conversations again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Um, it's been a hard slog. We've had a hard slog. Um, since we've got back, really, yeah, um, we've had a tumultuous time since we've been. It's been crazy. Well, there's been COVID oh, yeah. and I mean, mm. COVID. What is? To, I be, think to be honest, COVID, COVID is came at a good time, good time for, for us. us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the only thing it didn't, it wasn't good timing in a way, but it yeah. went about okay in the end, which it always does. Everything we've always yeah. done has always turned out in the long run. Yeah. Um, we couldn't get back into our own house. House. Right, because you had tenants in there and they wanted to stay longer and stay longer and you couldn't they evict wanted them. to stay longer and but. you can't you can't evict in co during COVID. Yeah. yeah. However, it worked out quite well. So we, we went and joined um, an agency that you go and house sit and pet mind, sit mind a home. home. Yep. And because there were budget constraints now that the worst budget yeah. constraints, yeah. Although oh, yeah. we still had the rent coming in, we kind of overstayed our welcome over in Europe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we didn't want to. We didn't want to churn through your investing capital. We would portioned a certain amount, and yeah. then the rest of it we wanted to quarantine because there's still a portfolio that has to perform and, and future security. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. very easy to overspend, and it's very easy to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy to um, go outside those boundaries when you're having so much fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's hard and it's still hard to come yeah. back to reality. We're finding it still hard now. Yeah. Um, we want to go again, but obviously we can't um, go overseas at the moment. Yeah. So um, because, I mean, travelling's always Travelling's hard. hard. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got to sort of... Settle down a little bit. We know we've got to sort out down bits and pieces. Um, <laughs> and so this is the coaching again, right? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and it's just interesting for people. I hope you don't mind me sharing some of the dynamics here um, from a coaching perspective. Once again, you guys don't need to buy any more property. So it's not about buying more property. It's about letting your portfolio do its thing. But now in the interim between letting your portfolio gather its growth and um, pay down some debt and all of that fun stuff, get your rents up, aside from that, you're still living life and you've got goals you want to tick off and you've just come back from this massive trip. You've been crash landed into um, real life again having to get jobs, consider what are you going to do. You don't want to go back to what you were doing potentially. There's That's all the this. reasons that we did go That's away. That's why we went. We promised each other we would, we would not, not go, go back, back to what we were doing, doing before. Right. And so there's been some challenges in that space with shift work, with mm. – so, <laughs> so then we, then this is this – this fear around, well, what if this happens? And then it starts to kind of happen. And then it's how do you work through that? So now we're at the point where we're re-engaging for coaching because Helen's big picture again. She's like, oh, I'm off. We're traveling. Come on, Ian. Next yeah. adventure. <laughs> the gypsy. And Ian, you're <laughs> sitting more like, well, we've got to work out. How's all this going to work financially? What are we doing? What are we quarantining? So we're having all those conversations now about what it looks like moving forward. And um, being so brave, you've put your house on the market. I think I can share I that. Or you those on this but, week. Photos tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, photos tomorrow. So. Because it's a big property that you've currently got and you're empty nesters now. We yeah. are. 
with and your grandparents. With your little grandson, though, but obviously um, he doesn't take up much space yep. at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we're looking at, well, what do we do with those funds and where are you going to live? Can we buy well and be left with some more capital? And can you do some more travel? And what does that look like? What does it mean for jobs? What does it mean for everything else that you've got ahead of you for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And they're exciting conversations and now we've just got to work out, well, you've got to work out. I should stop saying we. It's like the royal we because I'm coming along with you vicariously. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I guess it's, um, yeah, we, we've got to basically, um, we have had a, like a short conversation with you, I guess. Um, so we have to come back in and sit down and and yeah. um, with all our thoughts and our and our next set of goals. Um, Ian's doing his, I'm doing mine, and then we'll go back in, come back to see you and yep. on the Zoom or yeah. however we do it, and yep. and structure another. Make another strategy, I guess, and structure it again so that we can yep. something that we got to aim for. Aim for you got yeah. in, in life. You got you got to have a goal. Yeah. Or something to aim towards. It's, it's so Dangle much that carrot. easier to to get on with life and and work. I guess if you've got something at the end that it's gonna pay for. It's easier yeah. to do something if you. Don't particularly enjoy it, or you're not overly enthused about it. Yeah. If you can see there's a goal at the end, a light yeah. at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. 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 Amen. Towards something. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's a wonderful note to probably wrap up on. And so, if I can ask you one final question, um, is there anything that I should have asked you that I haven't? Is there anything that you would like to share with um, maybe the listeners or the viewers today that? is really important that you've learned on your journey because you've had the ups and downs and the bumps and I think we're coming through to the other side now. What would you share? It, it won't happen overnight. As frustrating as it is, <laughs> you, you, hear, you hear all these stories that people make hundreds of thousands in next to no time at all in property. Yeah. Yep. But more often than not, you just got to sit tight. Yeah. You gotta, you go, you gotta go with the flow to a certain extent, and yeah, take the goods with the bads. Yeah, um, don't extend yourself so you can't enjoy life. Yeah, as well. yeah, uh, yeah. Don't enjoy, it, enjoy yourself along the way, right. because otherwise, it I think it becomes a chore, it's and a you'll chore, just drop off. You become resentful, and you don't. Yeah, you're not enjoying anything, and then at the end of the day. Who knows how long you can do these goals for, or yeah, or or do the goals that you you want. You know, you you might want to go up to Nepal. Uh, but, but if you, if I've you, heard Nepal twice now. It's on we'll, the radar. We'll get, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> before we all, you know, before we've got everything that's aching too much. We, you know, before we can do the the climb. Yeah. Um. So yeah, do. Do knock off small goals along the way, big goals along the way. Um, instead of leaving it all for one day and Perfect. then thinking, oh, I can't do that it's anymore. And then you're yeah. regretting it. Wow. Yes. Amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> Be strong and, and listen to your... Listen to your gut. I think that's the conversation we had before as well. Yeah, listen yeah. to your gut. Yeah. Listen to your soul, I guess, of what it is you want actually out of life because I, one of my mantras is um, squeeze squeeze every drop out of, of life sponge because you just don't know what's around the corner. 
True words never spoken. Um, well, um, my friends, uh, this has been an absolute joy having you here. Thank you so much for letting me talk through everything. <laughs> well, I yeah. Thank you for, yeah. for guiding us on our journey, I guess, because if it wasn't for you, we probably wouldn't have. Nah, probably done a lot done of what this. we have done. <laughs> and we'll be back for more. And we'll be back for more. Beware, <laughs> look out. <laughs> well, I look forward to maybe uh, in 12 months' time we'll be having the Helen and Ian podcast part two. <laughs> 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 Lovely. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, Thank Dad. you. And thanks, thanks to the whole team yeah. and and all the other clients for, you know, taking us under their wing, I suppose, yeah. and, uh, and helping us in our courage and mm -hmm. you've yeah. been incredibly brave and um and an absolute pleasure to coach oh yeah thank you very much Jack. Love all the very best thank you Hey, thanks for listening to Property Investor Tales. Remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops. As you can guess, I love hearing people's Property Investor Tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with me via email at propertyinvestortales at positivementor.com.au. We would also love your feedback and I would appreciate a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember, you can watch all of these podcasts over on YouTube at Positive Mentor or at positivementor.com.au. Until then, take care, happy investing and bye for now.